Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day of worship and communion with you, God. Truly, Lord, you are the only one who upholds our life. Lord, without you, we are nothing. And for that, Lord, we recognize that our help comes from you alone. That the true strength that we use every day, Panginoon, comes from you alone. That without you, Lord, um, upholding us to this world, wala na po kaming kakayanang mabuhay pa ng maayos at matahimik, Panginoon. Uh, Lord, guide us as we again, once again, gather right now to study the history of the church so we could have a deeper perspective and understanding kung ano po ang simbahan na kinibibilangan namin ngayon. Salamat, Panginoon. Ang gabay ng Panginoon kami at ang mga makikinig nito. Sa pangalan ni Jesus, Amen. Okay, so good morning. Uh, welcome to our Sunday School. Um, Alright, so tuloy na tayo. So 30 minutes lang tayo, so wala na intro-intro. Okay, review na lang tayo. Okay, so last week, napakaganda because naumpisahan natin ang ating pag-aaral. And last week, we tackled several things. Um, including yung importance bakit natin kailangan magkaroon ng malinaw na perspektibo about the history of the church. Hindi ito history ng congregation na ito, ah, or history ng anumang congregation, but the history of Christian church. Of course, madadaanan natin lahat yan. Madadaanan natin lahat ng um, revivals, lahat ng mga birth ng iba-ibang mga dogma, iba-ibang mga belief, denomination. And we will not put bias, but we will just teach you the truth. At lahat ng mga may include sa pag-aaral na to, ay definitely may background tayo kasi sa ating pag-aaral sa college or maybe sa high school, ay napag-aralan na daanan natin itong mga period na to, Mga reformation period, mga medieval period, renaissance. Okay? So, um, last week, yun nga, na meron tayong perspective, di ba? Um, very important. Tapos, kailangan natin maintindihan that um, prior to the birth of different denomination, 30, uh, before Christ and AD, okay, ang reliyon sa mundo dalawa lang, di ba? Ni-review natin yan, is either you believe in the God of Israel, who is Yahweh, or you believe in pagan religion. Dalawa lang. Kaya nga ang classification ng race sa paningin ng Diyos, dalawa lang. It's either you are Israel or you are Gentiles. And we belong from the Gentile nation. Because di naman tayo mga Hudyo eh. Diba? So, there is Christianity. Tinuro din natin. Bakit? Noon, kahit wala pa si Christ. Because Christianity simply means people who believe in Christ. Sino ba ang Christ? Messiah. No, kahit pa they don't have sa Old Testament, wala pa silang knowledge about the name Jesus, but they have the knowledge about the Messiah, the coming King. Okay? At popular yan. Even at times ng kapanganakan ni Christ, prior to the birth of Christ, kasi napasin mo yung lumabas yung star, morning, yung, yung North Star, di ba yung mga Magi, mga Gentile yun eh. Di ba? Hindi naman sila part ng Jewish community. But they know, they also know that sa pabiniwala ng mga Hudyo, ang, si- ang sinyalis ay yung star na yun. ba? So, they know. So, popular ang Christianity. The expectation of Messiah. So, kaya nga noon, uh, there's only one Christian belief and one pagan culture. Of course, yung pagan culture, may iba-iba yan sa kada iba-iba mga lugar. Pag sinabi pagan culture, yung mga naniniwan, sumasamba sa nature, sa mga rebulto, sa mga graven images, sila mga pagan. So, dalawa lang yan. Okay, we have to believe. And we call it Catholic because it's universal. Okay? So, uh, napag-aralan din natin last week that during the time of, of intertestamental period, Ibig sabihin yung pagitan ng Old Testament 
and the New Testament, yung 400 silent, yung 400 years in between from the book of Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament, to Matthew, to Christ, to the coming of Christ, okay? That's 400 years. And in between that, doon nangyari yung transition ng empire, ng dynam ng, ng, ng empire, no? And ang naabutan niya na occupation ni Christ, okay, at ng mga Christians, at ng mga apostles, ng mga early church fathers, ay yung occupation ng Roman Empire, and they call it Roman Peace. Diba? At sa Roman Peace, kaya nga Roman Peace yon kasi every time nakakonquer nila isang lugar, instead of abolishing their belief, yung existing belief sa lugar na yon, what they do is ina-adapt nila yon ah uh, ini-adapt or hinahayaan nila mag-exist yon no they let so that's why in Jerusalem yung time ng ni Caesar no uh, sa Jerusalem ginawa nilang province yung Jerusalem and they let the the Jewish court practice its practice no uh, practices and but they are on the government side so they govern almost the entire world, right? So, ang Jerusalem ay province ng Roman Empire. Okay? So, ano pa ang kailangan ng pinapag-aralan? Last week, yun, that despite, despite the fact that the Roman Empire is on the seat, sila yung nakaupo as authority, sila yung nakaupo as leader, as government, buong mundo, Bagamat ganoon, mayroong mas malaking mundo kaysa sa kanila. Powerful in terms of culture, in terms of language, which is the Greek. Kasi pa prior to them, yung Alexander Empire, yung Grecian Empire. Right? Now, he almost conquered the whole world. Diba? So, bagamat Roman regime, pero culture ng Greek ang nangingibabaw. Language ng Greek ang nangingibabaw. You call it koine. Diba? The Greek language. Kaya nga ang New Testament, naisulat siya sa Greek language. Kasi yun ang dominant na language. No? Yun ang dominant. And ang dominant culture is yung culture ng Greek. Greek. So, in terms of culture ng Greek, ano yung do, pinaka-dominant na or remarkable na bagay sa kultura ng Greek? Yun ay yung, kumbaga they call it age of wisdom. Diba? Na... They look for higher wisdom. Kaya nga, uh, na pina, na, na, nag-umpisa pa yan, kila Plato, kila Socrates, kila Aristotle. Right? So, yung birth of wisdom. So, when they talk, when Greek, of course, ang Greek, hindi sila Christian, sila yung mga pagans, they worship thousands of gods and goddesses. Uh, ano, uh, included na. And then, uh, they are not Christians, so, when they talk about wisdom, when they talk about the logos or word, they pertain to higher being. Sa Greek, they, they, spear, uh, ano yun? they spread okay, the thoughts that bukod sa physical world ay mayroon pang transcendent world. That there is behind this life. That there is this, there is life after this life. So, kaya they are in search for that. They are in search for higher knowledge, higher wisdom. Kaya nga di ba na uso yung pagpatayo ng mga Ariopago Ariopagos. Kasi nung panahon ng sa culture ng Greek, malaya yung public speaking. Kung may thought ka, kung meron kang idea. You can go there and speak your your heart out, speak your mind out, and there will be listeners. <laughs> okay, there will be listeners because they want that. They want to hear uh, something new. At napatunayan niya natin yan when we saw that even in the ministry of Paul, he was entertained by the by uh, by the uh, Greeks. No, he was entertained by the pagan world in the Mediterranean area, in Athens, right? In Malta, in Turkey. He was entertained because they want to hear 
o it, may mga biblical account na talagang they listen to Paul right as he preach and then tinake advantage niya yung pagpunta niya ng Athens yung may nakita siya doon na isang altar and nakalagay doon sa altar to the unknown god so Paul take, take, took advantage of that uh, situation of that uh, opportunity na pinakilala niya na hindi niyo kilala yung Diyos now ito siya na pinakilala niya ngayon nagpreach siya about that and also we can see that in the preaching of the book of John of course that he started the book like this that in the beginning was the word he used the word word or logos to capture the um, uh, interest of both pagans and Jews, mga Hudyo. Kasi, sa mga pagano, when you talk about word or logos, it's something divine. So they will listen. Pagating naman sa mga Hudyo, when you talk about the word logos or word, they all automatically know that it is about God. Because in the Old Testament, the word God, the word and God is one. Na? Walang ibang word na superior and authoritative sa culture ng Hudyo maliban sa word of God. Hello na? Okay. So, last week, we ended up doon sa sinabi natin na during the early days of, of or the foundation day of the church, wala pa, alisin nyo muna ang katoliko sa isip nyo. Andahan natin na hindi ito Catholic religion, ha? Because the Catholic birth is just around uh, 1400s. Okay? So, that's 1,000 1, years plus ago na ng death of Christ. Alright? But during that time, masasabi natin that after the death of Christ, okay, during the time of the, of the establishment of the church as an organized body na? after the Pentecost ready ang mundo nakaprepare ang Roman world intellectually right why do I why did we emphasize the word intellectually because during the time people are interested to listen to new views Kasi nga, dalawa lang ang paniniwala dati is either maniwala ka na ang buhay mo hanggang dito lang or maniwala ka na may buhay pang kasunod. Okay? Dalawa lang. So, they're open. Unlike today, infested na yung society with different views about afterlife and life here and worldview. So, pagod na yung tao. But during that time, they have the hunger. Okay? They have the hunger. During the times, during the Roman, Greco-Roman world, when you say Greco-Roman, it's a mixture of Greek, Roman world, right? Ready ang tao or nakaset ang mind ng tao for the gospel. No? Maaring mas deadly physically, mas dangerous that time to preach, pero mas receptive ang tao. They will entertain debates on public, in public, no? And people will listen. If you go outside, you speak about, I'm going to talk about the word. They will listen. Ngayon, uh, antingin siya yung baliw. Right? <laughs> Sorry, ah. Okay. So, continue na tayo. Now, let's go to the expectation. Um, prior to Christ, okay, sabi ko nga, di ba, mayroong 400 silent years, intertestamental period. May mga ang 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 Jew ang mga Hudyo ay nadahnahati sila sa tatlong pangkat. Okay? Tatlong pangkat. No, of course kahit mahati 'yan, lahat 'yan naniniwala 'yan sa sa kanilang Old Testament scripture. Lahat ng mga nasa Old Testament, mga prophet, mga prophecies, nagkaroon lang ng mga iba-ibang um, focus or identities itong mga grupo na 'to. Okay? And, discuss natin yung isa-isa. There are three. Number one is yung mga zealots. 
Sila yung mga ano, radical Jews, radical na mga Hudyo. Sila yung mga bayulente. Okay, parang hindi man NPA, uh, hindi rin mga terorista, basta mga radical. That they are willing to hurt people, they are willing to kill. Sila yung mga lumalaban pa ilalim sa Roman government. Na? So they attack the uh, the armies of the Roman armies and they fight. Kasi nga in expectation Iba-iba kasi ang expectation si itong mga grupo na to. Tatlong tatlong grupo to eh. So they all believe that there is coming Messiah. They all believe that the three of these groups, they all believe na mayroong restoration ng kingdom ng Israel. Di ba kasi nga, nasakop sila. na restore yung kingdom of David. Naniniwala sila na may coming king. Okay. And most probably, they believe um, in everything about the Old Testament. They believe in the, in, the, in the Word of God. Okay, so yung mga zealots, they are waiting for a uh, revolutionary leader. Yun ang kanilang perspective. And, and yun nga, kaya nga, um, medyo violent yung grupo na to. Violent talaga sila. Hindi medyo talaga, violent talaga sila. Okay? At nagtatago sila. Pinagahanap sila. No? Kaya nga, di ba, meron incident sa Bible, yung inakusahan na lang nagkikreate ng gulo ay yung mga Hudyo. No? Because there are events that they create trouble. Okay? And the second group is the Essenes. Ito mga Essenes na to, ito yung mga, uh, para sa mga monks. Nakatira lang sila sa mga kuweba. Okay? Mga malayo sila, separated sila sa mga tao. Extreme naman ang kanilang pananampalataya that they wait to the point na hindi na sila, kumbaga, nag-withdraw na sila, na nag-withdraw na sila sa attachment sa kanilang uh, membership sa society, even to the religion, no? that they wait. Kaya nga yung kung ha, ha, are you familiar with the Dead Sea Scrolls? No, yung mga nakuha mga scrolls sa Dead Sea, sa mga kuweba. Sila mga nagsulat yan, yung mga essence yan. Eh. Ay, sila yung nag-keep, may tago pala noon. Sila yung nag-tago noon. Okay? And, um, yun nga, uh, you can look at them as people who completely, completely detach uh, themselves to the society. Para extreme nga, para mga monk nga, di ba, na parang they fast, eh, parang yun na, in terms of siguro, pati sa health nila, pati sa pakikipakikitungo nila sa iba, they detach. And, parang sa mga Thessalonica, di ba, they waited literally na baka dumating na, baka dumating na, na hanggang sa naubos na lang sila, hindi sila may trabaho. So, ito yon They are waiting for the prophet of light who would expel the darkness from evil. No, I should expel the darkness of evil pala. Sila ito mga to. Now they are waiting for another prophet. So ang expectation nila, another prophet, no? Of light. Okay? And the third one is the most popular one is the Pharisees. So basically they are the, the mixture of uh, political and spiritual. No, sila yung mga national leadership. Sila yung mga tumatayong leader ng uh, Hudyo. They represent the Jews, the race of Jews in behalf of in behalf of Jews sa harap ng Roman Emperor. Okay? So, they are waiting for a nationalist. These Pharisees, they are waiting for a parang kung ang essence, uh, kung ang zealous, they are waiting for a rebellious leader. Ang mga Pharisees naman, they are looking for a political leader. Okay? Mga, kumbaga, sila ulit yung magiging, ayun. Okay? Who will restore the law and will free Israel from oppression or Roman uh, oppression. Nakikita mo, kahit society natin ngayon, 
these three kinds of group exist, right? Yung mga taong extreme na humihiwari na sila sa materialism. And then iba naman yung mga military mind. Kaya nga may mga martial law eh. Diba? Parang when they want to take over the government by force. At meron political. So, doon na hati yung, yung tatlong bisong oras, sa 10 minutes lang. <laughs> ha? E-S-S-E-N-E-S. -S Okay, essence, alright? Okay. So, due to exile and migration of Jews all over the Roman Empire, yung synagogue um, were established and became primary destination of Paul on his journey before he preaches to the Gentiles. So, what happens is, di ba, meron kasing yung um, Jewish diaspora, yung diaspora, yung nagkalat yung mga Hudyo sa iba-ibang mga lugar, di ba, nag-migrate sila, nag-scattered sila kasi some of them uh, were just, just purposely left the Jerusalem and they migrated to different places. And that is why, Wherever you go in Mediterranean continent, you will find synagogues. May mga church na mga natatayo. Synagogue is a church. Jewish synagogue, tawag dyan. Okay, kaya nga mapapasin mo, sa journey ni Paul, sa kanyang missionary journey, sa iba-iba mga mga lugar, outside Jerusalem na to, ha, he always go to the synagogue. Doon siya nagpipreach. Diba? Doon siya na preach And ito na yung pinalabasan ng diaspora na talagang talaga nagkalat-kalat na yung uh, mga hudyo. Now, punta na tayo doon sa history timeline proper. Okay. So, ito nangyari, di ba? So, Malakay, Book of Malakay in Old Testament, suddenly, the Lord God stopped talking right to them. And then, that's B.C. And then, tatawid na tayo sa, sa second, sa second um, part of the history. Yung birth of Christ. Okay? So, during the birth of Christ, 32 years or 30 years, nag-start siya 30 years old, approximately. And yung kanyang ministry, it lasted for uh, three years until he got crucified, right? So, uh, on his crucifixion, after three days, he went back to life. He appeared to the apostles among with, hindi lang sa mga apostles, there were hundreds of people there, believers. And he stayed with them, no? For 50 days, okay? And, uh, kaya nga yung church sa Rome, Yung church sa Rome, hindi pa ito uh, Roman Catholic. Ah. Church ito na bunga ng mga believers and disciples ni Christ during His earthly ministry who happened to went to Rome. Kaya nga, the, the speculation is that the church in, in Rome was founded by people who are present during the Pentecost. Ano yung Pentecost? Yung 50 days ng pag-stay ni Christ after His death with them. Diba? During the, sabi nga, ni Christ na kailangan niyang umalis, otherwise, hindi dadating ang helper. So, pag-alis niya, then wait for the helper. Right? For the for the Spirit to come. At nung bumaba ang Spirit, doon na nag-speak in tongues sa Book of Acts. Right? Yung sa Book of Acts, may kita natin na um, doon na siya nag-start nag no? na, na nagsalita sa iba-ibang lingwahe yung mga tao and they, they were able to understand each and every one and then may nang mga nagsabi nga lasing ba itong mga taong ito? Bakit sila nagkasalita ng mga ganyan? Blah, 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 blah. And then Paul started to preach. Ah, sorry, Peter. Habi ni Peter, hindi lasing ang mga taong ito. Okay? So, doon nag-start yun. 
and then most probably um, some people went back to Rome and established the church there okay whatever now pero there is no proof okay there is no proof that it is Peter who founded or na siyang nag-found ng, ng church sa Rome kasi itong church sa Rome na ito na Catholic Church Catholic means universal we are part of the Catholic Church but not Roman Catholic Church because Roman Catholic Church the birth of that is during the time of King Constantine pa lang. and that's a thousand years after na 1,500 years or 400 years right ay sorry not for anon uh, not 1,000 years no, that's, uh, no, uh, 400 years, sorry. That's 400 years. Nalito tuloy ako. That's 400 years. Sorry yung kanina, na na-confuse ako eh. That's 400 years after, after the birth, death, death, death of Christ. Okay. Kasi yung Roman Catholicism pala, nasa isip ko, is just a 1,500 year old religion. 1,600 years old. So, there's the centuries away, no? Uh, after the death of Christ. So, walang proof, evidence that Peter founded the church in Rome kasi itong Roman, Roman itong Catholic Church in Rome, yung Church of Rome na nasa Bible, yung Romans, okay, hindi ito Roman Catholic Church, but Church in the place of Rome, no, located in Rome, walang evidence that Peter founded this church. Walang enough evidence. Okay? Kaya nga sinulatan pa ni Pablo eh. Why would Paul write a letter to a church if it's already founded by an apostle? Diba? Eh mas, kumbaga kinuha nga lang, ang nag-verify nga lang ng apostleship ni Paul is Peter, John, right? And James. So, kaya nga malaki ang ano na hindi mo pwede i-claim that yung church sa Rome na ito ay ay tinayo ni Peter. Although it doesn't matter because whether tinayo yan ni Peter o hindi, church siya ni Kristo. Totoong simbahan yan. But later on, yan, naging ganyan na sila ngayon. Dadaanan natin yan kung bakit na uwi itong church in Rome, ito ng Catholic Church in Rome, at naging siyang Roman Catholic na bigla. Okay? Kasi may mga iba-ibang church. May church sa Constantinople, may church sa, sa Antioch, sa Ephesus, may church sa Rome. Kaya nga mapapasin mo yun sa Bible. Pag din mo, tingnan mo New Testament, letter of Paul to the Ephesians, Ephesians, Philippians, Galatians, Corinthians, Romans. And these are all churches. Okay? So, tutuwa na tayo dito sa leadership of the apostolic church. Kasi, ang church may mga period siya. And after Christ, we call it the apostolic church wherein the apostles are still living. Sila pa yung nagpa-facilitate, sila pa yung leaders ng church. Of course, especially yon because maraming pwede maging pastor. Maraming pwede maging uh, church fathers. Pero ang apostles, labing dalawa lang. Okay? <laughs> labing dalawa lang, including in addition to of pala Apostle Paul. And he is the last. Apostle said in the Bible, and I am the last. So, bakit importante that you recognize that the Apostle's office is exclusive? Kasi, sila lang ang pinagtiwalaan ni Kristo ng kung anong ituturo sa simbahan. Okay? Hindi na pwede magkaroon ng panibagong apostol. Bakit? Kasi wala nang mag-verify. Wala na si Christ. Wala nang mag-verify ng kanyang mga claims. And of course, ilang taon na nakaraan. Diba? Iba ang disciple. Ha? Pag sabi disciple, tagasunod. Ang apostles, hand-picked ni Kristo yan. Pinili yan first hand. Okay? Like, like um, Apostle Paul. When Christ appeared to him, Pero hindi ilang yung claim. Pinatunayan yon ng mga apostles. Kasi pwede yung mag-claim ng kahit sino. Nagpakita sa akin ng Diyos, si Kristo. 
but who will bear verify? And in the, in the case of Paul, okay, Apostle Paul, verify ito ni Peter, ni John, ni James, ng mga apostles sa present that time. Okay, and all of them got martyred. Okay, so, ang apostles office, office yan. Okay, hindi yan gawa-gawa. Okay? So like what we have now, ano yung office namin? Pastor's office. Deacon's office. May kanya-kanyang office yan na hindi yan magkakaiba yan. No? So ang foundation ng church is of course, si Christ, Jesus Christ, and then it has been established through the apostles. No? Ayan na yung Christianity as as an organization as a group as an institution as an organized body na so wag kayong ma-confuse ha na baka sabihin natin yun doon na ba nag-upis sa simbahan sabi ko nga hindi may Christianity na noong pa ngayon na organized na kasi complete na yung fulfillment kasi during that time ang foundation ng Christianity in the Old Testament is ano prophecies pa lang. Wala pang fulfillment. Ngayon, yung church na kinabibilangan natin ngayon is both prophecy and fulfilled na siya. Okay? Because dumating na si Christ, dumating na yung pangako sa Old Testament, nangyari na yung mga sanado mangyayari, of course, hinihintay na lang natin yung last days. Okay? Is Christianity organized during the New Testament Pentecost? As an organization, institution, yes, but we have that already prior to this. Difference of the church in Old Testament and New Testament. In the Old Testament, there's no fulfillment of being the light of the world. The New Testament church was fulfilled on Great Commission. Okay, na fulfilled na tayo kasi New Testament church, inatasa na tayo o ang, new, ang church to spread the gospel. Okay? So, um, yung Old Testament Church, ang requirement para mapagtayo ka ng simbahan, 10 faithful men, okay? 10 Jewish believers, okay? Jewish uh, men. Pagdating sa New Testament, sabi ni Kristo, ang church ay hindi na ganun. Ano sabi ni Christ sa, sa church, sa New Testament Church? That, where there is two or three gathered in my name, I am in the middle of them. Diba? Yun ang church definition ng church ngayon. Hindi na siya building lang. Ito ay spiritual na. Okay? Spiritual na. Of course, tayo ay nag-gather, pero hindi na mahalaga kung ito ba, under nakapasa ba tayo sa requirement dito sa church natin dito? No. Wala nang ganun. Okay? So, yun yung difference. But we are now organized in the sense that complete na yung pinag-aaralan natin. Both prophecy and... Uy, sumobra na naman ako. So, 30 minutes as I promised. <laughs> okay. So, ang leaders ng apostolic church, ng, 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 ng apostles' office, of course, um, yung mga apostles. Okay? Uh, pero ang pinaka-center talaga niyan, ang binibigyan din is si Peter, si John, si James, and of course, si Paul. Ah, uh, yun na. So, titigil lang muna ako dito. Huwag niyong kayo nimutan yung ating nadaanan, maiksi lang, para mag-sync in muna. Next week, uumpisahan na natin yung timeline. Okay? Yung apostolic, yung leaders of apostolic church. Mag-insert na tayo about, the, about these people. So, yun ang ating pag-aaral na next week. Okay? Sige, mag-pray na tayo. Lord, thank you again for the short time that we spent for studying. May all these things, Lord, sink into us para, Lord, as mas mag-grasp namin ang aming foundation and ikaw, Lord, na nakadedetermine whether hanggang saan kami haabutin dito. Um, give us, Lord, the wisdom and the understanding. And also, Lord, the acceptance, the submission, the humility para kami, Lord, ay mas matuto pa at makita namin ng walang bias 
kung ano ang nangyari sa simbahan. So we can now guarantee where we belong. Lord, we don't have any other sources of this but the book. Okay? But your word, Lord, that this truly happened. And also thank you for using people in the course of history for keeping this timeline for us to understand this today. All this is your prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.